quest for the real Robin Hood has unearthed many contenders. Of these candidates, many are Robert Hoods in the Yorkshire area in the late 13th to 14th centuries, which is a disappointingly long time after the Robin Hood of legend, who supposedly lived during the reign of Richard I, also known as Richard the Lionheart. This would place Robin in the years 1189 to 99. However, there is one candidate from the 1190s. In most of the tales of Robin Hood, Robin is known as Robin of Luxley, a disinherited knight who is forced to leave his land and become an outlaw. Now, historically, in the real world, in Warwickshire, there's a small village called Luxley, and there's a disinherited knight called Robert Fitzoder. In 1193, the Lord of Luxley Manor was Robert Fitzoder, whose ancestor was Bishop Odo of Bayeux, the half-brother of William the Conqueror. Now, because the suffix fits indicated someone who was an illegitimate descendant, it was sometimes dropped to give the impression of noble, legitimate descent, which would give the name Robert Odo, to all intents and purposes, another Robert Hood. So what is the tale of outlawry concerning this Robert? In the Register of Arms in 1196, it's recorded that Robert was no longer a knight, but that crucially, he wasn't dead. He then sold 120 acres of land to the Priory of Kenilworth. The Priory at Kenilworth was set up for Augustinian monks in 1124. What is significant is that many legends of Robin Hood tell stories of Robin in conflict with monks and abbots. Indeed, an early poem from the 15th century called Robin Hood and the Monk sees Robin captured by the Sheriff of Nottingham, tipped off by a monk who recognised Robin in a church. Later, Little John captures the monk and kills him. And in another tale, the guest of Robin Hood, Robin helps out a poor knight to repay £400 to a vengeful and greedy abbot. And then, according to most editions, Robin is killed by a really very evil prioress who wants revenge on a crime who repaid her years before. So, it can be seen that anti-clericalism was rampant throughout the stories. Historically, corruption and greed were commonplace in 12th century England. According to the records, although Robert wasn't dead, his son-in-law, a man called Peter de Mora, inherited most of his estate in 1196. We know this intriguing information from a bureaucratic record which stated that Peter's grandson bequeathed Loxley Manor to the priors of Kenilworth. The story is further embellished. In 1203, a man named Robert Fitzodo was alive in the village of Harbury, not far from Loxley. If these two men are the same person, then, in 1196, Robert was definitely stripped of his knighthood. According to local legend, Fitzodo became an outlaw in the nearby woods around Loxley, which included Harbury in its vicinity. This could all be a tenuous link to a Robin Hood who never existed in the first place, but there is a grave in Loxley Churchyard which may just be the final resting place of Robert Fitzodo. Loxley Churchyard is a small, quiet place, but it is steeped in history. The site was given to the Cathedral Church of Worcester by Offa, the powerful King of Mercia, in AD 760. Fast forward a thousand years and it's rumoured that dead soldiers from the Battle of Edge Hill were buried here. But it's this grave here that's attracted the most attention. It has no name, but is identical in appearance to the tombstone that used to adorn the reputed Robin Hood grave at Kirklees in Yorkshire. That tombstone was stolen, never to be seen again. So just possibly, this could be the theft by an enthusiastic local who wanted to make sure that Robert Fitzodo, the real Robin Hood, received his rightful memorial. Of course there's no evidence for all these theories, so what are we to make of the Warwickshire Robin? You could take the romantic view that Robert Fitzodo may have been forced to sell his land against his will, whilst at the same time being stripped of his knightly honour. He then perhaps could have become an outlaw and attempted to wreak his revenge on the greedy monks in the woods of Warwickshire. Like all good legends though, we'll never know for sure. But it's easy to conjure up an image that only a few miles from the birthplace of England's greatest writer, William Shakespeare, perhaps England's greatest folk hero, might also have lived.
When a knight won his spurs In the stories of old He was gentle and brave He was gallant and bold With a shield on his arm And a lance in his hand For love and for valor He rode through the land No charge would provide And no sword by my side Yet still to adventure and battle I ride Though back into storybooks giants have fled And the knights are no more and the dragons are dead